Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and I'm going to give you a couple quick tips on Native Instruments Contact Player today that hopefully will help to demystify some of the things about Contact that can make it a little confusing to use at first. One of the first things that people tell me a lot of times is that they click on the Libraries tab in Contact and they only see one library listed. And they say, well, I've purchased a lot of other libraries for Contact and I don't understand why they're not showing up. Well, the simple answer is generally that if you need to, if you take a look here, move your mouse down just below the library list, and you're going to notice that my mouse now has turned into this double arrow icon. This double arrow icon means that I can click and drag this section of contact downwards. This might seem simple, but this actually can be something that's very confusing every once in a while. Even in my case, when I first started using Contact a while ago, I didn't even know that I had access to the rest of my libraries that way. So this is how you can access the rest of your libraries in Contact. So again, very simple, but it can be frustrating. And so I thought that this is something that I would show you guys. The next thing that uh, happens after that is that folks will say, okay, well, I've got all these libraries, but how do I make use of them? And loading libraries in Contact Player, or in Contact, should I say, is actually very easy. All that you need to do is click on the Instruments button right here. And the Instruments button is going to show you all of the preset instruments that you have available to you for this library that you're currently working with. So after you've selected one, all you need to do is double click on it. And now it's going to load up in the right hand side of contact. Now, you want to give these libraries a little time to load sometimes because you're going to notice here in the memory section, this will usually start off at zero megabytes and it'll make its way up. And that's because contact is loading up a number of samples that are contained for the preset that you have just loaded up. So depending on the size of the preset, that could take a little bit. So give it a little time to load up. But after it's done that, you'll be able to start playing the instrument. And of course, you can also play the instrument using the virtual keyboard down on the bottom of contact. Now, you're going to notice that some of the keys here are blue, some are orange, and then others are white. Each of these keys denotes that there is an instrument mapped to this key. So if you take a look at those keys, you'll be able to match them up with your MIDI keyboard if you're using one attached to your computer. And this way, you can play some of these specific mapped instruments using your MIDI keyboard. In the case of Abbey Road drums and some other uh, sampled instruments which you might be using in contact, this can be really useful. Something else that can cause a lot of uh, confusion at times in contact and also in some of the other native instruments applications that folks will ask me about is how to get their audio device set up. And that's actually pretty easy to do. In contact, click on file and then select options. This is going to open the options dialog box. Now in the options dialog box, you want to take a look at the audio tab. Here in the audio tab, under the driver section, you're going to notice that if you click it, you're going to have a couple different options. W-A-S-A-P-I and ASIO. Now usually you probably want to work in ASIO and that is because the ASIO uh, driver profile is uniquely suited to digital audio. However, if you don't have an ASIO device on your system, you can use the secondary option and that should allow you to be able to get uh, just as good an audio output on your system. However, as I say, if you can make use of ASIO. The next pull-down menu gives you the option to choose which device on your system you would like to have contact talk to as its primary audio output. So you want to click there and you want to select the audio device that you have connected to your computer. You can also click on the ASIO config button and if you're using an ASIO compatible device this will open up the ASIO control panel for that device and allow you to make changes to buffer settings and various things like that. Now you're also going to notice here that you have this sample rate pull down. Here you can choose from various sample rates 
44.1 kilohertz is CD quality. Going up from there will give you better quality. However, you may find that you incur some latency as you go up in higher sample rates. So you do want to find a good happy medium between the two. After you've made all of these settings, all you need to do is go ahead and hit the close button. And now contact will be set up and ready to work with your audio input output device. Now the same issue applies every once in a while to setting up your MIDI device with contact. Again, click on File, Select Options. Click on the MIDI tab in the Options dialog box, which opens up. Here you're going to see all of the MIDI devices that are available to you on your system. Now you're going to want to find your MIDI keyboard or other MIDI device which you wish to map up to contact. And if you notice that in the Status section it says Off, click and you're going to get pop-out menu and this pop-out menu you have the option for off of course and then you're going to see the available MIDI ports that are being broadcast from this device into contact now you can simply select the port that you would like to use and the device is going to be listed as using the port which you have selected after you've done this again just simply close the options dialog box and now you will be able to play Abbey Road or any other loaded library in contact using your MIDI keyboard. So right there I'm using my Axiom keyboard to play the Abbey Road library that I've loaded up in contact. These are just a couple very basic things with contact but as I say, at times these can be very confounding and can make simply opening up, opening up contact and making some music with it a little rough. So I wanted to go ahead and show these few options to you guys to hopefully simplify things and allow you to get back on the road and making music with contact. I hope this has been useful to you guys as always. Keep in touch with me. My email is brian at obedia.com. Get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor and find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care and happy music making to you. Music